many of us uh, who work for 501c3s are aware of the prohibition against supporting or opposing uh, candidates for public office. But I think it's always important to point out that there are a lot of things that uh, we can do. So although we are restricted from um, outright supporting or opposing candidates or endorsing candidates, um, we can get involved in uh, issue advocacy or continue our issue advocacy or our lobbying campaigns. Uh, we can continue to criticize incumbents. Um, we can also um, engage in voter registration, voter education, candidate education. Uh, these are just, you know, some of the areas and there's some rules and uh, some guidelines that, you know, organizations should keep in mind uh, and probably visit our website uh, to uh, learn more about that. But <clears throat> there are so many things that you can do to get involved in elections. Of course we know that uh, supporting or opposing someone who is uh, running for public office would be partisan. And there are partisan political activities, you know, giving to campaigns, which you can do in your personal time, but, uh, you know, not as a, a, a C3, you know, in your C3 capacity. But, um, you know, nonpartisan, when the IRS is evaluating activity or a communication or election activity, uh, an organization's activity to determine whether or not that is um, partisan activity. Uh, the IRS uses what's referred to as the facts and circumstances test. And that facts and circumstances test is or can be uh, a complicated test. It's basically a smell test where the IRS takes a number of different factors and um, uses those factors in evaluating um, an activity or a communication. Uh, so for example, a few of those factors of those factors would be um, whether the communication mentions a candidate, whether the uh, communication mentions what may be a platform or uh, a hallmark of one of the uh, candidates' campaigns. Um, um, that would also include whether or not the communication was uh, released close in time to the election, the proximity in time to the election when the communication came out or the activity uh, was done. So there are a number of different factors that, that are looked at. There, uh, Of course, more than just those few that I just listed, but in the interest of time, um, I just, again, refer to the website or give us a call and uh, we can kind of help talk you through those, through those issues. we can conduct or we can do candidate questionnaires and those answers can be uh, published in a uh, voter guide. Um, we have to remain nonpartisan when doing that uh, questionnaire. Make sure that it covers uh, a broad range of issues, includes open-ended uh, questions, and uh, also that we disseminate it to all the viable candidates. When you publish those answers, when you publish what has been said by the candidates, it has to you know, apply equally uh, again, have, uh, uh, you know, present each candidate in an equal light. Perhaps you use maybe a word limit. So one candidate isn't uh, presented um, in a light that's more favorable than, than the other. You can have candidates appear both in their capacity as a candidate or uh, have them appear in a capacity unrelated to their candidacy. Um, when you have them appear as a candidate, uh, it's just always important that you offer that opportunity to every viable candidate and that, you know, in the context of a debate or forum where you want to invite every viable candidate. Um, and again, those same kind of uh, principles come up. Unbiased questions, uh, have an impartial moderator. If they are appearing, if the candidate is being asked to appear in a capacity unrelated to their candidacy, we can do that as 501c3 organizations. Have a candidate appear to perhaps talk about a book or talk about uh, or receive an award, for example. Um, in that instance, you don't have to invite all the candidates to you know, appear, but it's important to remind the candidate that this is all about the candidacy. We are asking you to speak to us about your book or to receive an award. 
And it always helps because you can't necessarily always control what a candidate says. It's always a good idea to have an, a letter or some kind of uh, disclaimer where you say, we are a 501c3 public charity. We don't support or oppose candidates for office. This is not an endorsement of your candidacy, uh, but we, you know, we do appreciate you appearing to talk about your book. You want to avoid when you know, embarking on a lobbying campaign or continuing advocacy. You want to make sure it's part of a continuing criticism, a continuing um, um, line of um, addressing an issue, something that you've done in the past. Uh, you also want to make sure that you don't, uh, that you don't criticize an incumbent's you know, personal characteristics for office. For example, if, if you know, you've got a congressman running uh, for re-election, you and they're about to take a vote. You can, you know, ask for uh, them to vote on a specific issue. What you can't say is this person is not fit for office. Uh, so it's just important to stay focused on the issue, focused on your message. Always keep in mind that your message is what's most important. That is 501c3 public charities. We're not um, charged with um, influencing the way people vote but we are charged with uh, carrying out our charitable purposes and trying to inform the voter so that they're more knowledgeable about the issues. A 501c3 public charity cannot support or oppose candidates for office and our lobbying activity is limited. While those limitations or those limits are very generous um, limitations, there, there are some limits. 501c4 organizations, on the other, on the other hand, um, can lobby to an unlimited extent, um, and they also uh, can support or oppose candidates as long as it's their secondary activity. It cannot be the primary purpose of a 501c4 organization. The IRS is not exactly defined primary purpose. Some practitioners, based on case law, have come up with a percentage. So while some, some groups and some people may abuse that tax status, it's not um, uh, the majority.